in case you missed it, this is a part two. So if you have not seen part one, you can watch it up here and then come back to this video. Welcome back. I'm the IntensiveMD, a double board certified intensivist, here to give you information about the intensive care unit. In the first video, we discussed why someone may need a ventilator and the process of putting somebody on a ventilator and maintaining them on the vent. So in this video, we're going to discuss the process of taking somebody off the ventilator and how we make sure that they are okay to be removed from the ventilator. So the first thing that we look at is why were they placed on the ventilator in the first place? And I go, went over some of the reasons in the first video, but if you have, for instance, a pneumonia, is the pneumonia getting better? Is it clearing up? If it, they were put on it for some type of reaction that caused their tongue and lips to swell, well, how does it look? Does it look like it's getting better? Does it look the same or is it getting worse? Because if it's the same or worse, well, we're not gonna go ahead and take them off the ventilator. After that, we start waking the patient up and making sure that their mental status is okay. Are they waking up for us? Are they able to squeeze my hand? Are they giving me a thumbs up? Are, does it seem like they'll be able, when we take them off the ventilator, to give us a good cough if they have a lot of secretions or if they have a lot of mucus, are they gonna be able to cough that up or do they have a risk of choking on it? The next thing we do is switch the mode of ventilation to something we call a spontaneous breathing trial. So this is a mode on the vent that kind of simulates somebody breathing on their own. It gives them a little bit of support, a little bit of pressure to support their breath, but the patient has to start initiating their own breath. If we switch them to that mode and the patient is not taking their own breaths, then we know, well, if we take this, them off the ventilator, then they're not going to take their own breath. So then we know that we need to put the mode back onto a regular vent mode and wait a little bit longer. Sometimes this happens when somebody hasn't cleared the sedation from their body. So we just give them a longer time off sedation. Even if they appear to be awake, they may not be awake enough to start taking their own breaths. So we give them more time and then we might try again later that day or the next day. We also look at if we switch them to this mode, and we start a spontaneous breathing trial, and they look like they're working really, really hard. Well, then we know when we take the tube out, they're gonna be working very, very hard to breathe, and their breathing muscles might tire out. We also check some other things, which we call mechanics, so we'll tell patients to take deep breaths and check their volumes. Usually a respiratory therapist has them do a couple of different maneuvers, and we look at those numbers and see if they're adequate for the patient to come off the ventilator. There is a certain percentage of people that look like they're doing fine and able to come off the ventilator, but within the first couple hours or the first day, they end up back on the ventilator. Obviously our goal is once we take the tube out to keep them off the ventilator, but failure does happen. If we're not able to get somebody off the ventilator, it looks like they're doing worse or just not getting better, then we start having conversations with the patient's family and the patient if they're awake enough to write to us and ask them, you know, is this something that you think that they would want? Would somebody want a prolonged period of time on a ventilator? If they, if we knew we, they weren't going to be able to come off the ventilator and this was progression of their disease process or you know, if they start looking like they have irreversible lung injury, do they want to be permanently on a ventilator? If it looks like somebody is not coming off the ventilator, but just is going to take more time, and we think that, you know, their lungs are getting better, but not quick enough to take them off the ventilator right now, we start discussing what, what's known as a tracheostomy. So this is a whole that goes in the neck into the trachea and the tube is connected to the ventilator that way. And this allows for a slower wean from the ventilator. Usually patients who have tracheostomies are able to be more awake because it's not as stressful and jarring as having a tube in your mouth. Having a tracheostomy also allows for people to participate more in physical therapy and start getting their body stronger. Many times somebody who needs a tracheostomy and still connected to the vent 
may need placement in a long-term acute care facility where they can do more physical therapy, more vet weaning, and continue to monitor the patient in a hospital-like setting, but outside of an acute care hospital. When we have the discussion about tracheostomy with the patient and family, we do let them know there are, you know, our hope is that in a couple months, they might be able to come off the ventilator onto an oxygen collar. But sometimes there are cases where somebody is never able to come off the vent, so they'll be long-term ventilator dependent, but through the tracheostomy, because the tracheostomy, again, is not a treatment. It's just continuation of the current level of life support. about the ventilator do you have I'll be back on Friday with a reaction video it's my first reaction video so I hope you enjoy it and if you have any guesses as to what I may have reacted to you can leave it down below and if you have any recommendations or suggestions for things for me to react to I'd be happy to hear them and you can follow me on Instagram at the intense MD I post daily at least once a day over there and if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe.